the rest of Steel Jaws followers have combined together to create Unstoppamus. Now for a lesson. You may have heard these words before, but I'll teach you what they really mean. Go beyond! Plus! Hey, what's up everyone? James here. We are back with the end of Transformers Last Bot Standing. This final issue is incredible, my god. If you are new here and you need to catch up on this story, click the card right here or check out the playlist in the description box below. Also, if you find value in this video, please hit that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. So remember in the last video, we left off with Steeljaw confronting Rodimus about a big secret he's kept to himself. So what I want to do here is create an order of events, a connection of all the flashbacks and everything we've learned in this series that led to Rodimus becoming the last spot standing. It's going to lead right into the opening of this final issue, but if you rather just get to the opening of the final issue, check out the chapters below. Now with that being said, let's get right into it. So starting off, we know that the great war between the Autobots and the Decepticons went for many cycles on Cybertron until it was rendered lifeless. From there, the war came to Earth, but in the end, their conflict caused the destruction of Earth. The war continued even after this. Other planets faced the same fate as Earth, stars were destroyed in the process, and countless civilizations were driven into extinction. After untold eons, the Transformers eventually ran out of resources to fight over and repair themselves with. They slowly but surely fell one by one, either by time or battle, until only Rodimus, Gripper, and Strongarm believed they were the last of the Autobots, with the last of the Decepticons chasing them. Now the identity of these Decepticons does get revealed later in this issue. This was when the Autobots discovered the planet Dinah, a planet containing Energon. After arriving on the planet, Strongarm wasn't willing to give up on their race. She believed they deserved a second chance and wanted to leave and search for more of their kind. However, Rodimus convinced her that after all the damage the Cybertronians have caused to the universe, there can be no second chance for their race. A beginning for their race is an end for so many others, and he insisted that they stay on the knock and defend it from any other Cybertronians who are still out there that would do it harm. Strongarm agreed and the trio went to explore the planet. The initial plan was to leave the Energon on the knock untouched and just live off the fuel they had until they gradually faded away. But the plan was adjusted once they discovered they weren't alone on this planet. Now they did not want to interfere with or guide the evolution of this civilization since it led to the end of others in the past. Instead, they waited and looked after this species. After many cycles, this species grew into separate tribes. The Autobots studied each tribe until they found one trustworthy. They gave this tribe a box with three Energon keys and a data pad that contained instructions. Part of these instructions was to wake them if they ever needed help with what they had warned them about. Sometime later, Gripper fell due to an accident in the hills. Rodimus and Strongarm were forced to watch him die because they had no resources or the know-how to save him. As more time passed, eventually Strongarm snapped, reverting to her original thought that their kind deserved a second chance and she tried to leave the planet with their ship. Rodimus attempted to prevent this by just clipping the ship's wings, but it indirectly caused an explosion that trapped Strongarm in the ship, killing her in the process. After both of his comrades fell, and he believed himself to be the last Cybertronian, Rodimus began to slow down. In time, he came to the tribe he trusted to see if he could be of use. From there on, the box Rodimus had given them and Rodimus himself was passed down from generation to generation. Now, that leads us to the present day, with Steeljaw revealing Rodimus' big secret, which is the rest of the instructions Rodimus had given Shiv's ancestors that was within the data pad. That's what we see here, Rodimus informing Shiv's ancestors that the Nock is a unique planet with a vascular network of energon beneath its surface. Because it crisscrosses the globe, a disruption in one section would create a chain reaction that would blow up the world. He warns them against ever trying to dig for it. However, he knows in time the people of Danak will discover it and figure out how to use it as fuel. And that's the problem. He explains that his destructive race using Energon caused their end and the end of thousands of worlds. He and the Autobots believe they are the last of their kind and have agreed not to touch it and promise they will quietly fade away in their disguises. Although, should a threat come from one of their kind or locally to insert one of these Energon keys directly into them, 
they will know what to do, but he hopes this will never happen. After the message ends, Steeljaw destroys the datapad. Enraged at Rodimus for keeping this planet hidden from his race, Steeljaw tells Rodimus how much he and his family, the last Cybertronians, have suffered. He goes on to explain when they eventually could not detect Energon, they refitted their forms to accept cruder forms of substance, aka killing various life forms and turning them into mush. He goes on to blame Rodimus that all the star systems they were forced to end are all on him because he wouldn't share this planet with his kind. Rodimus makes an excellent point here. He tells Steeljaw that even if he did, Danak would have met the same fate as those planets they've destroyed. What they did to all those life forms wasn't out of desperation, but oppression. It's why he has to stop them. When Steeljaw says, history has forgotten you, did you think you'd leave your mark by letting our race die? Rodimus answers, one forgotten Cybertronian is a good start. Let us all fade into oblivion. We're done. Steeljaw retorts that it will no longer be their fate now. They'll use the people of Embrance to fuel themselves enough to begin extraction of the Energon on the planet and for the reconfiguration of their bodies. When Steeljaw thinks of using one of the Energon keys to help them hasten the process, that's when he and the other Cybertronians realize there are only two. Rodimus reveals he used one of them on himself and took out Wheelie and the other Cybertronians at their camp. When Steeljaw's followers see what real Energon can do to their bodies, they begin to go after him and swarm him trying to grab one of the Energon keys. One of the Energon keys ends up slipping out of his hands and smashes on the ground. You would think they would give up after that, but Steeljaw's followers have gone nuts. They all dive bomb to the ground trying to consume the remnants of the Energon in the sand. As that's going on, Rodimus tells Shib to free the town folk from their cages. With only one Energon key left, Sharpclaw goes after Steeljaw, pleading for him to share it with her. After Rodimus and Shib successfully free the town folk, Steeljaw orders his crew to go after them. Still, they completely ignore his orders and go after him, trying to take the last Energon key. Rodimus takes advantage of the chaos and kicks the Energon key from Steeljaw's grip, and Shib ends up catching it. Rodimus tells her to run. As they escape, Rodimus tries to buy more time by throwing Stambos and Brennett Steam Ramblers at the last Cybertronians and blowing them up with his flamethrowers, really displaying how volatile the Energon on Danak is because the explosion is powerful enough to knock him back unconscious. Now from here we go to our very last flashback and to be honest I do feel like this is something that they could have had in an earlier issue. It's still pretty cool though because it gives us the final missing detail which is who are the last of the Decepticons that were chasing after them and the last Decepticons are revealed to be Talon and Fangry. Yeah really nobody special. This is why I said it could have been an earlier issue. So while on the planet Talon and Fangry discovered that it had Energon beneath its surface, and they planned to send a signal out to any Cybertronians that are out there. But Rodimus doesn't let this happen. He comes up from behind and blows them away. He tells Strongarm and Gripper that that was the last of them. And you can see, even though they were Decepticons, Strongarm and Gripper have their doubts. And even Gripper says that they had no right. And Rodimus's reason for doing this is that they've run out of choices, time, and worlds. They are not starting the cycle all over again. We then go to present day with Shib arriving at the Energon mine, with Sharpclaw and Steeljaw not far behind. What's funny here is once the siblings head into the mine and see the Energon for the first time, Sharpclaw is so shocked that she says, Primus's ball bearings. And I just found this hilarious. I didn't expect this. When the siblings see the mine shaft, they're just just in awe of the vast amount of Energon here. Steeljaw takes notice of Shib and thinks it's a good idea to fire at her in an Energon mine. The blast knocks her down to the ground, but the mountain begins to rumble. We then go to Rodimus regaining consciousness, and he even feels the rumbles from the mountain and see smoke coming from the Energon mine. Just as he's about to leave, this huge hand grips his head. The rest of Steeljaw's followers have combined together to create Unstoppamus, a new combiner who just looks wicked and horrifying. Rodimus' response to this though is funny. He says, I knew our species were out of fuel, but I didn't know we were out of names. He fires his wrist cannons, destroying Unstoppamus's arm, but when he goes to fire again, he's out of ammunition, quickly realizing his energy charge up from the key is almost gone. 
So Rodimus switches into his alt form, driving up Unstoppamus's other arm. He leaps off, transforms midair into his bot form, grabs and rips off Unstoppamus's head. Dude, this was super sick. After Unstoppamus falls apart, Rodimus sees Luna Club's head pleading for her life, but Rodimus doesn't care. Just as he's about to stomp her head out, he remembers Shib and drives off. Meanwhile, back at the mine, Steeljaw sees that Rodimus was right about the Energon being volatile. When he tells Sharpclaw he will see what the Energon key will do to him, Sharpclaw chimes in that she's grateful to Steeljaw for leading their people for so long, for overcoming all the countless challenges and changes. However, she refuses to give him the key, wanting to take it for herself. When Steeljaw says no, Sharpclaw replies, then you better take it from me. Later, when Rodimus arrives at the mine, he is ambushed by a damaged Sharpclaw who slashes his throat. As he is bleeding out, or would it be leaking out? I don't know. But he sees Steeljaw standing over him, powered by the last Energon key. I wish we could have seen the fight between Steeljaw and Sharpclaw because obviously he won. Instead of unloading his blaster on Rodimus, Steeljaw chooses to go for a more personal touch. He kicks Rodimus, yelling at him that he could have saved more of Shiv's people if he would have just shared this world in the first place with his race. Now because of him, countless will die when he starts the process of stripping the knock of Energon. Now those of you who have seen the show Invincible, this will look familiar. When Steeljaw brags about how he can't wait to go back to camp and turn the town folk into pulp, Rodimus laughs. This confuses Steeljaw until Shib reveals that Rodimus destroyed their refinery, so without it, they can't create fuel. When Sharpclaw hears this, she falls into despair, but Steeljaw becomes filled with rage and thrusts his claws into Rodimus tosses him into the mine shaft and spits on his body. Now with nothing left to lose, no way to create fuel, Steeljaw points his blaster at the mine shaft saying, I'll be the one to pull the trigger. I'll be the one to ignite this world and set it aflame. But it was you, Rodimus, you who killed it. Sharpclaw tries to intervene, suggesting to Steeljaw that maybe they should return to camp to see if they can salvage any equipment and then mine the Energon. But Steeljaw refuses. He says, let us die like Cybertronians. Let us die like Decepticons. It's over. However, Sharpclaw points out it may be their end, but that doesn't have to be the case for the people of Danak. She tries to convince Steeljaw that Rodimus was right, that they've had their time and they know everything always comes to an end. But Steeljaw just won't listen. He cannot allow himself to lose. As he fires his blaster, Sharkhaw quickly blocks it with her body and dies. When Shib points out he shot his sister, Steeljaw becomes enraged. He grabs Shib, and just as he's about to blow up the planet, Super Saiyan Rodimus comes bursting out of the mine, destroying his arm, supercharged and fully healed by the pure Energon. As a long, long time DBZ fan, this is absolutely amazing. With no way of defeating Rodimus, Steeljaw tries to kill Shib, but Rodimus unleashes a Kamehameha on Steeljaw's head, blowing it apart. Rodimus then rips off his wrist cannons and says, please let that be the last time. Later we see Rodimus and Shib looking out at the sunset. Shib notices Rodimus looks a lot younger and compliments him on how great he looks. She mentions how when he came bursting out of the mineshaft, he looked like a god and calls him Godimus, which is such a great name and it is the title of this video, I'm putting it as the title. Rodimus initially says, please don't call me that, but then says, okay, maybe just one more time. When Shib asks about everyone in the town, Rodimus answers that he's cleared the town and he will be sticking around. He tells Shib that he's never been a fan of authority and compliments Shib on being the best boss he ever had. Shib asks Rodimus if this is goodbye, and Rodimus replies, no, not yet. We then go to an epilogue here, and through Shib's narration, we learn that Rodimus stopped working for her and started working for the town. He taught them how to mine and use the Energon and even helped them create a second generation of Steam Ramblers for everyone in town. Though Shib mentions that Rodimus stockpiled Energon for them and ensured that their Steam Ramblers had a little more extra kick than the others in order to give them an edge on the competition. I like that we see Fembrands looks more like a city now and that Stambo and Brennan are working for Shib. Eventually, in time, she says that Rodimus focused on building a ship. He used everything Steeljaw and his crew brought to Danak. 
and in time he successfully created a ship. The Cybertronians that were still alive after the battle, he brought onto the ship with him, and then one day, he just left. Chip says he took no extra fuel for himself and set off on a trip to nowhere. My time with Rodimus was short, scary, and exciting. He fought so hard against his people, his past, because of his guilt for everything he'd done. That's hard to win against, but I think in the end, he did it. I think he was a good person. He talked about how the sky used to be full of stars until his people took them all away, and how he wished he could have brought them all back. He knew he couldn't, but he did manage one, and one is enough. Farewell to the last Prime, the last Autobot, the last Cybertronian, and the last bot standing. That is the end of Transformers Last Bot Standing. This story was fantastic. Yeah, sadly, it was only four issues, but I think in just four issues, Nick Roche wrote an amazing story. You can tell this man truly loves the Transformers franchise and its fandom. If you made it this far into the video, I hope every one of you enjoyed it, enjoyed this series. Please hit that like button, comment below your thoughts on this series, and subscribe if you are new here. Other than that, have an amazing day, take care, and always remember, every day, to transform and go beyond. See you later, Beyonders.